Hello everyone. Today I'm going to be showing you how to get the most out of Compressor and hopefully export videos out of Final Cut Pro 10 much more quickly. Now when you're finished with a project in Final Cut Pro 10, you probably export it like this. You go up to File, go down to Share, and choose one of these options. Maybe you export a master file. It's going to export pretty quick, but it's going to give you a really big file size. Maybe since you're uploading to YouTube, you use the YouTube preset. Or one of the other presets, maybe you've made your own. Now there's nothing wrong with doing it this way, but it's probably not the fastest way you can do it. I'm going to show you how. What you're going to need is Compressor. Compressor is another program that goes along with Final Cut that used to be included in the Final Cut Pro Suite. Now that the Final Cut Pro Suite has been disbanded, we have Final Cut Pro 10 and Compressor 4 as separate applications. So you're going to have to buy Compressor 4 in addition to Final Cut Pro 10. Compressor 4 is available for about 50 bucks on the App Store. Now in Final Cut Pro 10, you're still going to use master file default. The reason is they don't have reference files. See, in older versions of Final Cut Pro, uh, for example, Final Cut Pro 7, which is what I'm most familiar with using, there were these things called reference files. It basically exported all of the information without any of the footage, and you could take that right into Compressor, which means that you could export this reference file and start exporting an H.264 out of the Compressor in literally seconds. It was really awesome. For whatever reason, Apple decided not to add that back into Final Cut Pro 10, but I'm hopeful that they will someday. <laughs> in the meantime, all we can hope for is master file. So, choose master file. It, does, it doesn't really matter where you export this to. It's going to give you a pretty big file, but uh, I normally send it to downloads. It's really irrelevant, but export this file out. It shouldn't take too long. Now, we'll open Compressor. Now, Compressor 4 is going to open. Um, there's actually older versions of Compressor, obviously. And what's sad is that Compressor 3, for example, which uh, came with Final Cut Pro 7, was pretty much identical to Compressor 4. Sadly, though, if you have an old version of Compressor, it will not work with Final Cut Pro 10. You actually have to have the new version of Compressor. I don't know why they did that, but they did. So now that we have our completed file, which I sent over to Downloads, it's right here, uh, we are going to drag that over into this box. And it appears right here. If you've never used Compressor before, it can seem a little overwhelming, but it's actually really easy to use. Just as you saw me do, you add the files that you want to alter, want to make new versions of, in this box, and then you need to give it a setting and a destination. Now by default, Compressor comes with a lot of uh, settings, a lot of different presets that you can use, but I like making my own. Uh, I have a bunch of different presets that I have made uh, depending on what I'm exporting. But as a general rule, everything I send to YouTube is H.264 video uh, at a different data rate. For vlogs, I use 5 megabits per second. If you're interested in using the exact same settings that I use, I'll show you. Under compression type, I've chosen H.264. The frame rate is current. 24 with frame reordering, best quality. But what really matters the most is up here, data rate. I've restricted it to a certain uh, kilobits per second. 5,000, or 5 megabits per second, is really good for people. Actual video of humans, I find. Um, I pretty much do all of my vlogs at 5,000. Now, whenever I do video game footage, let's say 720p Xbox footage, or Wii, or whatever, I generally bump it up to 8,000 because I find that the difference between 5,000 and 8,000 is actually pretty noticeable, especially when it comes to video games. If I'm doing a 1080p recording, I generally bump it up to 10,000. There's also been times in the past when I've done Super Nintendo recordings and I've dropped it down to 2,000. The difference between, uh, for example, the recording of Donkey Kong Country at 2,000 and the recording of Donkey Kong Country at 10,000 is pretty much not noticeable at all. But the big difference with data rate is that it's going to nearly uh, uh, reflect a file size. So for example, if you have 5,000 kilobits per second and your final file size is about 200 megs, putting this up to 10,000 is going to make your file size about 400 megs. It's not directly related, but it's practically directly related. So if you want a smaller uh, file size, like if you have a really bad internet connection and you need to make it smaller, um, then you can actually just alter this. It's going to affect your quality, but it's going to make the file size smaller. 
So ac uh, after you've made your presets and you uh, have chosen what you want to use, all you have to do is drag it up here. We've chosen to uh, use this uh, preset. Come over here to destination. Uh, it's got some destinations by default, but if you want to make a custom one, you just got to click the plus arrow. I've got one for vlogs and let's plays because I want them to go into uh, different locations. And then we will just drag this up here. Now the reason we're getting this little warning is because I've actually already exported this vlog. So this little warning thing comes up because this file already exists. If we just change the name in some way, for example, 2, that warning will go away. But all of, all of this is saying is this file, which is the file we have in the downloads folder, uh, we're going to take that file and apply this setting, and it's going to end up here, and it's going to be called this. We hit submit, and then we would hit submit one more time, and compressor would begin to export that file. It's going to transcode it, mean, meaning it's going to take that master file that we made that was several gigs, and it's going to make an H.264 version, which is going to be pretty much identical, um, at least to the human eye, but when we put it on YouTube, it's going to be much smaller, so it's not going to take us years to uh, upload the stupid thing. But, as cool as this is, that we could make bunches of vlogs or bunches of Let's Plays and have them all queued up and make it do all of the stuff by itself, it's actually not as fast as it could be. There's a little uh, checkbox here called This Computer Plus, and you can check that, and it'll make it a little bit faster, but it's actually still not as fast as you can uh, make it if you do it manually. So I'm going to show you how to do it manually. So let's hit Cancel here. Choose this, I'll press Delete, and it'll go away. And we're going to go up here to Apple QMaster, and then we'll choose Share This Computer. Now under Share This Computer, it's going to open up uh, the Apple QMaster sharing window. We're going to check the box, and then we're going to choose the radio button that says As Services and Cluster Controller. Now a cluster is basically a group of computers that are going to work together to export this file. Uh, you guys might know it better as a farm if you've watched lots of, I don't know, DVD extras. Um, you can still use cluster features with one computer, uh, but generally it's used for multiple computers. But since this is a computer that we're going to be using as the controller, we choose the second option. Come down here to services and check the box for compressor, and require these services to only be used in managed clusters, and then we're going to choose the options button. Now this is where the real magic happens. Depending on the uh, CPU you have, you're going to have different numbers of threads available to you. I've got a quad core, so I've got eight threads available to me. So we can change the number of instances from one to eight. Now, I have to throw out this little bit of information to you. Apple doesn't recommend this. Apple recommends that you use half. So if you have eight available, it recommends that you use four. But, hear me out on this. I have always used the maximum number, and I've been doing this for years. And there's been times I have left my computer on overnight, uh, pumping out 100% CPU power for like 10 hours, and I've never experienced any problems. So, just understand that Apple says that you're only supposed to use half, but personally, I would urge you to use all of them. Obviously, I'm not responsible if you do any damage to your computer, but understand I've been doing this for years and everything's always been fine. So, I use all of them. It's also going to be directly related to the speed, so I would recommend doing as many as you can. Hit OK. Um, so now all of this is set up. Press OK again. And now that we've established that this is going to be a controller, we have to set up the cluster. Come back up to Apple QMaster, Administer Clusters. Over here you'll see the clusters available. There are none. Click the plus, and we have to name this. You can name it whatever you want. I generally call it this computer plus, or this computer plus plus, or this computer plus Jesus, or even, you know, Macho Man Randy Savage. It really doesn't matter. I generally call it this computer plus because it'll appear right under the other option, so I like that. So this computer plus plus. Down here you're going to see the, uh, the computers available to you that you have set up as clusters, what we just did uh, up here. Um, if you click the little drop-down arrow, you'll see that all eight threads that we chose are online and active and ready to use. Now you can actually, if you have multiple computers, you can install Compressor on all of them, and you can 
uh, set them all up as clusters. The difference is instead of setting up the other ones as cluster controllers, they would be the third option. And then they'll, they're all going to appear in this list. And you're going to drag this up here. And if you had uh, other computers, you can drag them up here as well. Uh, and I've done that in the past, actually. Mal uh, and I have used both of our computers together uh, to export videos. I did it for a while and then I ran some tests and I actually found out it was faster to do it with just my computer and that's simply for the fact that it has to send the data across the network and sometimes that can slow it down. Maybe in the future when mouse computer is a little more powerful it might be uh, advantageous to do that but for right now I've went back to just using my own computer. You can hit this drop down arrow and you'll see that all of them are online, they're all active and selected and that's what we want because that's going to make it go faster. For controller we use Hack V2. If you had multiple computers you would put up here, you would be able to choose which one is going to be the controller. Then we hit apply, and then we close this window. Now, let's do everything we did uh, with the video before. We'll put the video in here, choose a destination. It doesn't matter if you choose a, just a destination or settings first. Choose a setting. I'm getting that error, so we'll change the file name. And now, whenever we hit submit, we have clusters available to us. We have this computer, but we also have the one we just made, this computer plus plus. Now we can choose that. When we hit submit, share monitor open. And normally when you export something out of compressor and it shows it in share monitor, you have this computer, which is your computer. But when you make a virtual cluster or a quick cluster, you get this icon. And you can see that it's already processing. Now the difference is, whenever you set it up to use all of your instances, and that you may have eight, you may have four, you may have two, depending on uh, how powerful your computer is, you can hit all these drop-down boxes and you'll see that it's actually processing this video in 15 segments. And you can actually watch each of them complete. It's broken up the video into multiple parts. It's even showing you that it's doing, uh, you know, 20 seconds of video right here. 20 seconds, 20 seconds. And it's also doing the audio that way too. So we can uh, undo that, and uh, it's going to export much more quickly than if you were just doing it by yourself or if you were doing it in Final Cut Pro 10. So that is how you do it. That's how you export a video uh, very, very quickly using Share Monitor, uh, or Compressor, rather. Okay, so that's well and good, and that is uh, the optimal way to use Compressor uh, in tandem with Final Cut Pro 10. Uh, obviously the problem is that you have to pay 50 extra dollars, but if you're doing a lot of exporting uh, or if you are doing um, like multiple things at once, I highly recommend it. You can work on getting a lot of videos done in the day and then before bed you can put them all in here, submit them, and when you wake up they're going to be done. And I really like that. Uh, the downside to using this method is that it's going to use up pretty much 100% of your CPU power especially if you choose all of your instances. Um, obviously the, the upside is that it's going to go super fast. The downside is that your computer is going to be very laggy. If you want to play a game while this is going on, it's impossible. I hope you have a console. Uh, if you wanted to use Photoshop, you're going to experience lag. It, that's, just, that's just the nature of the beast because you're using up literally 100% of your computer's power to do this. But um, it is going to go a lot faster that way. Now to finish this video off, um, I'm going to show you one other thing that I've been asked about a lot, and that is what kind of uh, filters or my workflow uh, that, I, that I do to my Let's Play videos for the audio. Uh, so let's come down here to the latest episode of Skyrim, which is 178. And uh, this green track is my, my commentary track. And I always apply two filters to my audio track. Let's click it. I always use compressor, and I always use less bass. Uh, I use less bass just because I want my voice to sound, well, <laughs> less bassy. Um, depending on your hardware, what kind of headset or mic you're using, uh, you may want to use something different. I suggest wholeheartedly that you play around with it. There are a lot of effects, not only in Final Cut Pro 10 or older versions of Final Cut, but Premiere or uh, Avid or Vegas or Windows Movie Maker, so play around with the effects and try uh, try as many as you can because it's going to give you a different sound and you may find that you actually like it uh, with a different uh, effect added. 
uh, compressor is added simply for the fact that um, it takes your lows, like your uh, the low volume parts of your track, and brings them up, and it keeps your high stuff uh, and pushes it down, kind of like a ceiling. This is really, really useful if you have two people talking. Uh, for example, when me and Mal do our commentary together, we use um, two headsets, but they're connected with a splitter uh, that goes into one line, which means that we can't adjust our audio independently. So we, if we use this uh, compressor track, it actually saves the day because it brings Mal's volume up because she doesn't talk very loud, and it brings mine down. So just by applying this filter, uh, our audio uh, gets a lot closer and sounds much more natural so it doesn't sound like I'm shouting over her. There's also different parameters you can play with, so you can actually alter this uh, to best suit what you want to use it for. Um, this was a godsend whenever I recorded with Emil, because Emil was incredibly loud, and he overpowered me in almost every single video. But by using the compressor, uh, it actually made it sound as if we were talking at the same volume. So I definitely recommend trying compressor playing around with it. Um, otherwise, I think that's it. Um, using the, the method of... Uh, the quick cluster, the virtual cluster inside of Compressor is going to make it go really, really quick, uh, a lot faster than if you just did it out of Final Cut Pro 10. so I definitely recommend it, um, and I hope that this tutorial helped you in some way. Um, there's one other thing that I need to let you know about, because it is kind of important. Let's go ahead and uh, cancel that. Um, and that is, sometimes, uh, you'll go to export something out of the compressor, maybe your computer crashed or some other weird error happened, and you'll notice when you hit submit that your cluster doesn't appear. You only have this computer, or maybe you even have none. Something is definitely wrong. Uh, to fix that, close compressor, uh, open finder, um, go to your uh, library, which you can get to with uh, command shift H. It'll take you to your home, and then go down here where it says library, Application Support, and Apple Queue Master. Uh, just delete the Apple Queue Master folder. Just uh, Command Delete. When you delete that, it will reset everything in Compressor, and you will have to reset everything up like I showed you how to do in this video, but that is how you fix it. It does happen on occasion. It's very rare, um, but I, I, uh, I ran into that problem one day, and it took me forever to figure out how to do it, and it was actually really easy. You just have to trash that folder. Anyway... That's it. Uh, hopefully now you can export things a little faster out of Compressor. Um, I would recommend getting Compressor anyway, just because the convenience of being able to export multiple projects at once is really beneficial. Um, it may not benefit your workflow like it has mine, but it's been really, really important for me to have, so I would recommend that you have it. Anyway. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any other questions about Final Cut Pro 10 or Compressor, uh, ask them down in the comments below, and I may make a video answering your question in the near future. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.